Hello, my name is Eileen Peterson, she, her. I play Nora in Doll's House and Doll's House Part 2. My name is Ryan Scott. I use he, him pronouns, and I am working uh, as the dramaturg on these, this production of Doll's House and Doll's House Part 2. Hi, I'm Lindsay Schmeling, she, her, and I'm the costume designer of Doll's House Part 1 and 2. Okay, my name is Michael Bravois, my pronouns are he and him, and I play Torvald Helmer. Well, Torvald Helmer has got it all going on. He's got a hot, young, sexy wife, three awesome kids, a job that is, you know, on the upward swing. He's just getting a promotion, so he's secure and confident. And um, in addition to the self-confidence, though, he's often described as being stern, domineering, and condescending. But I feel that if, at the end of Act One of a three-act play, if the audience thinks, well, she should leave him, he's a bit of a jerk, then there's no dramatic action, there's no conflict. Um, in the first Doll's House, I like to say that Nora is dancing as fast as she can. Uh, she is a bubbly, um, happy person. She moves through the room <laughs> with a frenetic pace and energy, regardless of her mental state during the show. And as we follow her journey throughout the show, you begin to realize that it might just be a veneer or a survival tactic, or there might be something underneath that picture that she portrays to everyone. Um, in part one, she starts out, uh, in her mind, she is convinced that her family life is wonderful, she is the happy housewife, and she's just trying to do everything perfectly and to not worry her husband, which ends up being lying um, and ends up getting her in trouble. And so the pressure of her trying to be perfect and doll-like uh, ends up really fraying at the seams. So we move from her being very uh, fluffy and doll-like into something more frayed and a little bit bristlier. Well, the dramaturgical process is different for every show. I'm a historian and that's what my background is. And when I've been called in in the past here to do this type of work, it's just to sort of maintain a sense of accuracy to a period, uh, so on and so forth. With Ibsen, it's a little bit different. When you're working with classics, it becomes different because they're they're malleable in the sense that accuracy to a historical period or time frame isn't necessarily what's most tantamount. So on the process of this show, the um, role of dramaturg, dramaturg is, um, I've seen it more as, I'm the voice of a dead man <laughs> and that I, I use my knowledge of the man, his words, his writings, his letters, to sort of act as the mediator between what Ibsen intended 156 years ago and Irene's vision for it filtered through today, 22, in the sense of right now and who's going to see it. You know, they're products of, they're products of the time. He has to be strong. He has to be confident. Um, and she is a product of her time as well. She's got one tool at her disposal, her femininity. And she's got to flirt with her husband and pretend that she's the helpless girl in order to win favors from him. So I would like at the end of the play, if the audience questions whether or not she should leave, you know, what is a marriage? What does it take to make a marriage work or not work? And I think that would be a much more profound discussion for an audience to have rather than just, well, she left bully for Nora. I want them to think about what a marriage really is. So um, at the end of one, at the end of uh, Henrik Ibsen's A Doll's House, uh, it's often called the door slam heard round the world. Because at the end of one, uh, Nora decides that she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know who she's been with for the past eight years. She doesn't know who she's been. And she wants to go and find out. And I think that's her main motivation for leaving at the end of one, is to discover who she wants to be, who she is.